What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. In this short quick tip video, I'm going to be sharing one of the most commonly used techniques that I use when I'm combining CG with live action, and that is camera projection. And uh, a lot of you have probably heard of it and used this before. If you already know about it, then go ahead and skip past this video. But uh, if you've been following this channel for a while, one of the things that I mentioned quite a bit is recreating that live action shot environment around your CG element that you want to add to your scene. And one of the best ways to do this is camera projection projection and a lot of the time for a lot of these live action shots that I'm adding CG elements to I don't actually have a accurate HDRI of that specific environment so I'm kind of limited to trying to find an HDRI that sort of matches the general environment and then recreating that environment using camera projection of stills in our video this video isn't really complicated but it's just going to cover some very basic camera projection that you can use to kind of recreate that live action shot inside of your computer and uh, anyways without further ado this is the shot that I've created here as you can see if I go to compositing mode I've just added the basic uh, sphere that you've probably seen a thousand times that people add to their shots to uh, kind of make sure that the lighting is working correctly and as you can see here we have some pretty nice reflections of the alleyway on our uh, reflective sphere here and that is because of camera projection so I'm going to show you how to do some basic projection here in a bit but uh, first I'm going to show you kind of my general scene setup here and then we're going to delete the projection and start from there so what I've done here here inside of Blender is uh, I've imported this shot into our scene and uh, I've done a basic 3D track as you can see here and uh, then I've imported that tracking data to a camera I have a video on how you can do that specifically I'm not going to cover the 3D tracking in this tutorial but uh, I'll put a link to that video in the description if you want to learn how to do this 3D tracking but uh, anyways I 3D tracked the footage imported that tracking data to a camera and uh, then added our footage as the background for our scene and uh, set up a general tracking scene with this button here after I've tracked my footage. And after doing that, what I've done here is I've recreated a very rudimentary uh, level of the geometry in the scene here. So as you can see here, I have one set of geometry for the alley and I have in the background here, I've just modeled very roughly this building here. And uh, these are our two elements that we've projected our image onto here. And if you don't know what camera projection is, to give you an idea, we'll go ahead and go to rendered view here. And I've disabled our projections in camera view here, but if I go to object properties here and then to visibility, I can turn on their camera rays and you can see that we've actually just projected the image of the alleyway from our video onto some very basic geometry in our scene here. And then we've made the material for that geometry under our material settings and emission material so that these planes are actually lighting our scene. And that's how we can get the reflections on our sphere here as our camera moves through the alleyway uh, without having a uh, very detailed HDRI. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, delete our alleyway here so we can start sort of from scratch. We'll go ahead and delete our building projection as well. And now all we have here is our ground plane in our background shadow catcher layer, which uh, if you follow that 3D tracking tutorial, um, this background layer will be set up for you. But uh, that's not really important for this projection tutorial. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and recreate the geometry in our scene here and then project an image from our video onto it to show you this process. So first I'll go ahead and uh, select our camera. I'll go ahead and turn on the motion tracking data and that's just so we can see the points in our footage here and just get a general idea of how to line up our alleyway geometry here and uh, I'll go ahead and press shift a I'll add a plane and we're going to first create just the uh, alleyway on the right side here so I'll just rotate this on the x-axis I'll press R X and then 90 I'll go to viewpoint camera and I'll just drag this up here press S X scale it up on the X axis and I'm just going to try to kind of roughly match our geometry here. So scale it up a bit, something like that. Maybe uh, move it over a little bit. As you can see here from our motion tracking data points, we gotta rotate it a little bit. And uh, you can be very precise with this, uh, depending on the style of shot. You uh, may want to match the geometry to these 3D tracking points in your scene a bit better. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it for now. Uh, something like this is pretty good. And now I'll go ahead and while our wall here is selected, I'll go to edit mode and then I'll just select these bottom two points 
pipes here and I'll press E, extrude it down. Then I'll press E, extrude it over on the Y axis. And then I'll press E and extrude it up. Now we have the other half of our alleyway. As you can see here, it's uh, looking a little bit weird, but uh, we're gonna adjust it. Don't worry, we're gonna bring this in. Go to viewpoint camera and probably just rotate this a little bit. Try to match our geometry a bit better creating a nice alleyway. Then I'll select our top points here for everything. Then I'll just bring them up a bit. All right, so this is uh, matching pretty closely here. Again, you can be as precise or as rudimentary as you want. Depending on your shot, you may need to be more precise if you're adding elements coming out of the wall or something. Now I'll uh, go ahead and select these top points here. I'll extrude them out on the Y axis and I'll do the same thing here. I'll press E, extrude them out on the Y axis as well. And uh, yeah, this should be pretty good for our alleyway. Let's go ahead and create that building in the background as well. I'll uh, go to viewpoint camera, then I'll press shift A, add a cube. And I'll just put this in the background. And I'll kind of roughly place this where the building would be. As you can see, I have a 3D tracking point on the building itself, which will help us line up this geometry. I was pretty close here. This is the corner of the building. I've selected that motion tracking point on the corner of our building. So what we can do is just kind of place this right on the corner of the building. So we have a track that's pretty accurate for the sake of reflections, something like this. I'll scale it up on the Y axis, scale it up on the Z axis, scale it up on the Y axis to make sure this whole area is covered. All right, something like this should be pretty good. Again, you can be more accurate if you want to, totally up to you. And we wanna make sure that both our uh, alleyway and our cube here are in our foreground layer. Go ahead and relabel our alleyway here to alleyway projection. And I'll move this up to the foreground layer and then I'll select our building cube and I'll call it building projection. And I'll move that up to our foreground layer as well. And that's just because our background layer is just for our shadow catcher. All right, so now that we've created our geometry to project our image onto, you wanna make sure that you have a screenshot from your video. So as you can see here, I've just taken this screenshot from our video and this is the screenshot we're going to project onto that geometry. I'll go ahead and uh, relabel it here since uh, my desktop is a mess right now. We'll call it camera projection tutorial screenshot and I'll close that here. And before we project that image from the camera, we want to uh, subdivide our geometry here so that there is plenty of detail. So I'll select our alleyway first, I'll go to edit mode, then I'll select all of our points of this uh, alleyway, and then I'll go to edge, subdivide, and then I'll just subdivide this maybe uh, 10 times, and then I'll go back to object mode. I'll do the same thing for our building in the background here. I'll go to edit mode, go to subdivide, and subdivide it to 10. And we can probably get away with less, but uh, that should be pretty good. That's just going to give enough detail on the geometry to actually project our image onto it. So now we'll go back to camera view and it's time to set up our projection. So uh, first I'll go ahead and select our alleyway. I'll go and add a new material in our material tab and we'll call this alleyway projection. Actually, I'll call it alleyway building projection. And instead of the principal shader, we'll use an emission shader. And under color, we'll select image texture. And then I'll just go to open. And I'll find that screenshot that we've saved from our footage. And I know that I've taken the screenshot at the very first frame of our video. So uh, I'll go ahead and open that here. And then I'll go to the very first frame of our video in the timeline to make sure the projection will match up with our live action shot. And then I'll just go into edit mode. Then I'll press U and then I'll click project from view. And now we'll switch our vector to UV. And now if we go to rendered view, you can see that we've actually projected that image from the camera onto our alleyway geometry in the scene. And as you can see, it looks really bad if you view it from an angle other than the camera. But uh, if your perspective doesn't change very much as you're moving throughout the shot, this uh, is pretty good for recreating your lighting. Obviously, if you have pictures of your live action environment, you can recreate the environment even better. But a lot of the times, like I said, I don't have those pictures and I'm trying to recreate the environment from the uh, video itself. So uh, that worked out pretty well for our 
our alleyway. Now what we can do is select our building in the background. I'll use that same uh, alleyway slash building projection material that we've created. And uh, as you can see here, it's uh, not projected properly and that's just because we haven't UV unwrapped it yet. So uh, I'll go ahead and move to edit mode really quick. And while all of our vertices are selected here, I'll press U and then project from view again. And now as you can see here, we have our image projected onto this plane here and it's helping to light our emission cube as well. And uh, you can see that there's some uh, purple reflections on our sphere and that's just because I've already projected onto our ground plane here and we just renamed that file as you saw me do earlier. And now Blender is having trouble finding it. So I'll just go ahead and select it and then go here and select our proper image file. And now as you can see here, looking much better. Now, as you can see here, our sphere here is looking pretty good. However, we obviously don't want to see the actual projected environment in the render of our shot. So what we can do here is we can select our alleyway projection. We can go to object properties here and then we'll just turn off the camera ray visibility and then we'll select our background building, turn off the camera ray visibility as well. And now what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to use these projection maps to light the CG object that we're going to add to the scene, but the camera is not going to actually render that projection. So super helpful in lighting your scene. Also for this specific shot to create this sky here in the middle of our alleyway, I've just found an HDRI with a similar looking sky to our live action shot. And uh, I've imported that into our environment world settings. And that's going to create that sky lighting our sphere from the top. Um, it's not totally accurate because obviously I didn't get an HDRI from the environment, but still looks pretty good. Finally, the last thing that I should mention is uh, for our shadow catcher ground plane here in our background. I've uh, used the same technique of recreating the environment with our ground plane here and then projecting that screenshot from our live action video onto the geometry of the ground here. However, since we're trying to render shadows on this plane specifically, we can't use that exact same emission material as emission materials don't allow you to render those shadows. So what I've done instead is I've done that same technique, but I've made the surface a diffuse layer and by making it a diffuse layer, we'll get some accurate reflections from below, but we're also able to use this ground as a shadow catcher. So as you can see here, if I go to our object properties tab here, it's a uh, shadow catcher. And if we go to our background view layer, you can see that we have a nice shadow here. And one thing I'm also noticing is that we have some shadows here along the edge of our pathway. So what's causing that is uh, the shadows coming from our alleyway projection. So what we can do is we'll go ahead and select that alleyway projection. I'll go to its object properties and I'll turn off its shadow ray visibility. And now as you can see here, the only shadow that's being casted on this plane here is from our mirror ball. And we can select our building projection in the background and also disable its shadow ray visibility as well. And now, as you can see here, we have a nice shadow that we can use to composite on our background view layer. And on our foreground layer, we have our mirror ball that looks pretty good as well. And obviously this is uh, a far from precise camera projection as I kind of just modeled this geometry in a pretty rudimentary way. But uh, regardless, I think the lighting is gonna be pretty good. And let's just do a quick little test render to finish off the video. Uh, let's make sure on our foreground layer, we have our mirror ball as well as our uh, projection map here for our environment. Then in the background is just our ground shadow catcher. Also make sure that holdout is enabled on your background shadow catcher for your foreground view layer. And then for your background view layer, your foreground collection will have its indirect only option selected here. But uh, I'll just go back to the foreground layer here and we'll just click on render and render image. Let's see what we get. And there we have it. We have some pretty realistic reflections on our reflective sphere here. With a little bit of compositing, it can look even better. And for setting that scene up fairly quickly, I'm pretty happy with that result. So this technique is super useful to use when you don't have a proper HDRI of the environment and the perspective of the shot doesn't change too much. This is super useful. At this point, we can pretty much add anything we want to this alleyway. You know, we can choose some City Builder 3D Hong Kong assets. Maybe we want to create a city within a city and uh, you know go ahead and render it out and see what you get anyways guys that's it for this video I hope it was helpful to give a general idea of how you can use camera projection to help integrate CG into live action a bit better if you have any questions or suggestions feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below let me know what kind of videos or tutorials you'd like to see next and I'll see you next time